Hello and welcome to the Uncharted movie that I would want to see. Uncharted was my most anticipated movie of the year. I knew it wasn't going to be a masterpiece and it certainly wasn't. I did enjoy it but I am seeing person after person who really really disliked it and I can totally see where they're coming from. Um, I didn't have as many issues as other people but there is another Uncharted movie that I would much rather want to see with a ton of changes everything from cast to when it takes place in according to like the timeline of, of all the other of all the games and stuff like that so i have crafted my own story i actually don't think that the story in the uncharted movie is the issue it's the way that it's tackled because it's not distinctly uncharted but the actual story of magellan's treasure that's fine for an Uncharted movie, but I have come up with something else. Now, regarding the movie, I think that when you're adapting Uncharted to a movie, you need to have it be as grand and as epic. Now, the runtime for the Uncharted games with Nate is really long. Um, I'm not saying that this movie should be three hours, because I think that would be too much for a lot of people, but personally, I think that two and a half hours would be pretty much what an Uncharted movie needed to be to capture the essence and the grand nature of an Uncharted story. And therefore, I would love to see an opening, let's say like 15 to 25 minutes or something like that, showing all the sequences, or a lot of them, of the sequences from the games that I would love to see in a movie. Now this would work sort of like a montage of all the greatest Uncharted moments. And just like Drake's Fortune and Among Thieves and to some degree Drake's Deception does, I would love it if this movie started with a quote. And I think it would be really amazing and really appropriate if that quote would be the same quote as in the beginning of Drake's Fortune. That quote being, there must be a beginning of any great matter, but the continuing unto the end until it be thoroughly finished yields the true glory. Sir Francis Drake, 1587. And from here, the montage would begin. So I know in the game it zooms out onto the boat that Nate and Elena are on, but in this movie I would like it if it zoomed onto the German U-boat in the Spanish jungle. And, and once we've really gotten to see the U-boat, we would then see... Gabriel Roman shooting Sully, and maybe a bit of the interaction there. We would see a clip of Elena punching Nate. There would be something with this scene in which Nate and Elena skydive when the when the, the plane is attacked. And of course, what I think the actual movie with Tom Holland lacks is a lot of shootout scenes. I needed to see Nathan Drake take out some goons, and of course we need to have that in the movie. And I think it would be really cool to replicate uh, some of the shootout scenes from the games, not of course the full scenes, but just some clips of Nate shooting some bad guys. And from the first game, I would love to see just like a minute or two of the shootout in in one of the courtyards in the, in the castle sequence. After this, I would like to see the introduction to Eddie and and Elena tearing down the wall and sort of how that scene plays out. And it is, of course, important that the movie that we're making here isn't just like showing every single detail from the games, because this would also sort of work like a way to to please the fans and to maybe get some new people to actually play the games. So instead of showing what happens all throughout the games, maybe something about like uh, Solly being alive and that it was the, the journal that, that saved him. But then from there, go on to, to Gabriel Roman opening El Dorado and getting infected and Navarro shooting him. See something like Nate jumping onto El Dorado. And then the final clips from the first game would be some of the final moments with uh, Nate fighting Navarro and then them sailing off into the sunset. When it comes to Among Thieves, some of the things I would, I would love to see is, of course, the opening, the epic and, and iconic opening. I would love to see... Flynn backstabbing Nate. I would love to see Nate and Sully jumping off the cliff in Borneo. I would love to see Nate running away from the truck while shooting at it. And again, uh, a few shootouts. The one I have in mind is 
the shootout in Nepal that ends up with uh, with Chloe coming in and, and saving his ass. I would have the scene with the where the the hotel is collapsing and and Chloe and Nate have to jump off. I would have Nate taking down the chopper and him meeting up again with Elena. I would have the first time that Zoran Lazarevich and Nate meet with that whole so this little man is Drake. And of course him killing Jeff and uh, then Nate jumping onto the train to go save Chloe. I would have the whole sequence, well not the whole sequence, but like some clips of the sequence where Flynn shoots Nate and the train is derailed. I would have some clips from the convoy in uh, in the second Uncharted game. I would have some clips of, you know, when the, the bridge collapses at the monastery and of course when the gates open into Shambhala. I would have the scene where they find the Chintamani stone and then the whole thing with Flynn killing himself and injuring Elena. And I would love it if we actually got the line that Flynn delivers when uh, before he, he pops the grenade where he says, sorry, lo sorry love, this isn't a movie and you're not the plucky girl who reforms the villain and saves the day. I just think that would be so amazing to have in a movie like this. And then lastly, from Among Thieves, I would have Nate shooting the lake and I would have just the, that last scene with Nate and Elena. Now, from Drake's Deception, I would love to see the introduction to Talbot, some clips of the bar fight. I would love to see some clips of the uh, the burning chateau, ending with the tower collapsing. I would love to see the scene where uh, Cutter gets shot with the dart, and I would love to see the scene with him jumping off the building and breaking his leg. I would love to see a clip of Nate fighting Talbot and getting uh, knocked out by Ramses. I would love to see some clips of Nate fighting Ramsey's pirates, maybe if if the time's there, to see like an overview of the of the ship graveyard from the third game. And of course the scene where Nate finds out that Sully isn't actually been held captive and him throwing the grenade and shooting Ramses. Then I would love to see the see you in hell, Habibi line from Ramses and him shooting the window. I'd love to see Nate jumping from the boat. I would love to see the plane sequence that we actually got in the Tom Holland movie, but maybe done a bit better with some better graphics. And I would love to see some clips of the caravan scene. And I would love to see when the gates open into Ubar. And lastly, from that third game, I would love to see the scene where Marlo drowns. I would love to see some of the fight between Nate and Talbot. And I would love to see again the final scene. Regarding clips from the fourth game, I would love to see... What the fourth game establishes so well that Nate has settled down and I would love to see some clips of him and Elena just talking and, and fooling around on the couch. And then jump directly into Sam saying, I need you on this one. And then go on to show some of the clips from A Thief's End. I would love to see some of uh, the fight between Nate and Nadine. I would love to see the scene where the car uh, drifts off the cliff and they have to drive back up and like Nate falls out and Sam... Uh, and Sam catches him, that would be awesome to see on screen. I would lo love to see some clips from the car chase in Madagascar. I would love to see uh, when Elena busts Nate, and I would love to see when they enter Libertalia, of course, just like when they entered Ubar and Shambhala. I would love to see some of the revelation that Sam lied to Nate and the whole I left my life for you line. And of course, from the same scene, I would love to see Sam getting shot and Nate falling off the cliff and banging his head against the rock. And lastly, when it comes to the this montage, I would love to see some of the fight between Nate and Rafe and, and some of their, their sword fight and, uh, and, of course, Nadine's betrayal. And then, from those flashbacks, as it will turn out, we zoom out into a scene with Nate, Elena, and Cassie, their daughter with a line sort of in the realms of, I think that's pretty much everything. So this whole opening to the movie, the fans get to see some of the clips from the games that we've always wanted to see. And it's a nice segue into the actual movie because now it leaves, it, it, it the movie opens where the fourth game ends off with Nate and Elena telling Cassie about their journeys. And of course, from here, it would be natural to have a bit of a conversation with Cassie about their adventures. Then I'm just picturing something like the dog running in to where they're talking and they have to go fishing. 
uh, because they do live near the beach and it just feels natural that that's something they would be doing. And then a bit of a throwback to the first game. I would love it here if when they're out fishing, having a nice afternoon, they see some ships approaching. And there would be some sort of like line of dialogue that is a callback to, to the first game. Something in the lines of, isn't this a bit reminiscent of how we met or something like that. Then I would love to see like a grenade, a grenade landing on the boat they're on, going off and Nate waking up alone back in his house. This would be when I revealed the villain of the movie being Ramses from the third game. Of course, with some sort of explanation as to how he survived, like s some of his men finding him and, s and getting him out of the water and saving him, something like that. I think that could work. That is the one villain that I think there could be a story about him being saved. And given the fact that we already know him, that would make him an incredible villain for this movie. Because, well, we know him, we know what he's done, how he's tricked Nate in the past. And that would create some incredible tension between Nate and Ramses. And this is where I would have the movie be different from the games. Because I think it would be like taking a dump on the fourth game. If Nate just like willingly goes back into this treasure hunting life. There needs to be some proper motivation like the fourth game. But something different. Something that we haven't seen before. And I think it would be awesome if that motivation was that Ramses has captured Lena and Cassie and for Nate to save them and get them back, he would have to go help Ramses find some sort of treasure. And I think it would be awesome. This is just an idea, right? All of this is just an idea. There's no way this movie is ever going to get made. But the idea I had was something regarding Christopher Columbus and that he maybe wasn't the first person to find um, America because, spoiler alert, he wasn't. Leif Erikson was. Something about Leif Erikson, his actual discovery of America, him finding some sort of treasure, and Nate having to work with someone that he hates in order to save his family. I think that would be some amazing, amazing dynamics. And after like uh, ha getting some leads and stuff like that, that's when I would introduce the people they're fighting against. Again, introducing some interesting dynamics because they come across some shoreline goons that it turns out Nate Dean have bought back. And the people they're actually fighting who's also looking for this treasure is Nate Dean, Chloe, and Sam. Now, Nate has to choose between helping the people he actually wants to help or helping the person who has captured his family that he wants to get back. I just think this would create an incredible narrative. Now, this would differ again from the games by not being Nate and friends against an army, but being an army against an army because Ramses has an army, Shoreline is an army. And in my head, Nate will originally save uh, choose, to, choose to save his family and side with Ramses, but of course not wanting to kill his friends and brother. Um, but of course that will change and he will side with his friends when he figures out that once again Ramses has fooled him. He did capture Elena and Cassie, but they're in the beach house. Now, as I said, Nate, after the explosion on the boat, wakes up in his house with Ramses and doesn't go in to check the beach house. You might think this is cheap. I don't know, but I think like with the right director and, and the right approach, this could actually work as a really effective twist. And it would also play into the third game with the narrative about Sully, but here there would be some sort of proof that he actually has them, but then he delivers them back in some way. I don't know exactly how it would play out, but something like that, I think that could really work. And this is also how I think that Sully would be like rolled into this story because after Sam figures out that they're fighting Nate, he calls Sully to track down Elena and Cassie. And of course, it's Sully who figures out that they're actually safe and then calls Nate in this big climactic like scene 
where something like Ramses is trying to, to tell Nate and force Nate to shoot his brother or something like that. Anyway, that is sort of just the idea of what the story could be. The really important thing when making an Uncharted movie and where the actual movie failed is with the casting. That is also something that I'm going to try to do my best with. I've been working for I've been working on this for like 2 to 3 weeks now ever since I saw the movie first. And it is really difficult. There are a lot of roles there are a lot of iconic performances, voice performances that goes into the or went into these roles, and it's really difficult to find someone someone that can embody those people. But I'm pretty happy with the decisions I've made. Of course, the big one you have to nail is Nate. I went through so many actors that I thought maybe could do this. I was like at first. Maybe Christian Bale, but I don't know if Christian Bale really... First of all, I don't know if, if he could be that funny. I don't know. Of course, he can be funny, but I don't know if he would be as naturally funny as so many other actors. The person I ended up with, and just to say quickly, I will try, for the most part, to steer clear of the fan favorites. So I know Nathan Fillion would be perfect. But... Someone I think would be equally perfect is Tom Hardy. You might think he's a bit short. Yeah, but actually, Nate in the fourth game is approximately 5 foot 11. Tom Hardy is 5 foot 10. Isn't, he isn't too short. For this, for this story, there is one thing that is maybe bothering me a bit. Tom Hardy is 44 years old. For this story, Nate would be around his mid to, to late 50s but when you've got someone who fits so perfectly into this role i think that's something that i could be fine with really fine and i tom hardy is one of my favorite actors he can do the comedic bits he can he can have the charisma he can have the the sense of humor he shows that in venom and he can do the action and he can have the quips within the action as he shows in inception he is just a phenomenal actor, and I think that of everyone in the world, he is the one that can capture the essence of Nate the best, while also delivering an incredible performance. When it comes to Elena, of course, another really important character that I really wanted to see in the movie that we actually got, I maybe cheated a bit here, because I haven't gone for one definitive actress. I've gone with two. One has got the looks, she's got the personality, she's got the feel of Lena, but she might just be too young. Now, Tom Hardy might be too young, but this actress is even younger. The other one is the superior actor, but I don't know if she looks exactly like Lena. The first one I mentioned is Jennifer Holland, who is fresh off playing hardcore in Peacemaker. I think she shows in that show when she softens up that she can be really, really sweet. And she can, I think she could do that maternal mother type role. While also, of course, throughout the entire season of Peacemaker, she showcases that she is a badass. The other one I considered is Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt is my second or third favorite actress working right now. She is incredible, and I think she would do an amazing job with this role. I'm just not sure that she has the looks. Sully might just be the most difficult one to cast. And, of course, the fan favorite is Tom Hanks. But I've actually gone a different direction that I don't think a lot of people have thought about. Andy Serkis. Now... What I'm looking for with the Sully character is that raw, crispy voice. And Andy Serkis can, of course, do that voice. I'm not saying that he needs to do, like, an impression of Sully. But he can he can don a voice that has that crispy nature that Sully needs to have. I think he would look incredible with a mustache. And given the fact that he's Alfred in that, I'm assuming that he's actually pretty good at playing the mentor and, the, and sort of the the father figure in a way. And I just think he could transfer that to the character of Sully. 
Now, when it comes to Cassie Drake, I of course want someone who can look like the daughter of Tom Hardy and either Emily Blunt or Jennifer Holland. And I looked at a few different actresses, like young actresses, and some were a bit too old and some didn't have the right ethnicity. And when I discovered or when I when I found the one that I've chosen, I was like, why wasn't she the first one that entered my mind? Millie Bobby Brown. She would be perfect. She is one of the best young actresses working right now. And I think that a role like this would be perfect for her. Now, when it comes to Chloe Fraser, she might be just as difficult as Sully. Um, and when you see who I've chosen, this might prove to be maybe even a bit more difficult than Sully. Someone I think would be perfect for the movie we actually got instead of Sophia Ali, who I really thought was miscast. If you dye her hair or give her a wig of some sort, I think Emma Stone is the only actress who has the voice to play Chloe, to have that crispy voice. She could do the, the sexy, mysterious charm that Chloe has perfectly. And I said that Emily Blunt was, was my second or third favorite actress. Emma Stone is, without a doubt, without competition, my favorite actress working right now. But for this version of the movie, we of course need someone who's older. And as I said, Emma Stone might just be the only one who can do the voice who isn't who I've actually chosen. And again, just as I chose two actors with Elena Fisher, and you might think that's cheating, I've, cho I've chosen to cheat a bit here as well. Because I haven't chosen two actresses, but the one I've chosen is Claudia Black. She is, of course, the one who actually voices Chloe Fraser in the games, and therefore it might be cheating a bit. But she has proved in the originals that she can do acting as well and not just voice acting. She has that perfect voice to play Chloe. She knows who Chloe is. She knows this character in and out. And she's a great actress. I think she would, she would work much better than Sophia Ali did. Now for Sam Drake. Again, I went through a lot of actors in order to find someone and I shortlisted three, ended up choosing the one. The one. And um, the two I haven't chosen is just as I considered him for Nate, I also consider him for Sam, Christian Bale. The thing here, that made me go away from Christian Bale was the fact that I, again, don't know if he is the most obvious for the comedy. And of course, Sam isn't as quippy as Nate, but he is, he does have that like goofy charm to him. And I don't know if Christian Bale would be the best at that, even though he is a phenomenal actor and I'm sure he could do it, but I'm not sure if it is as natural to him as who I've actually chosen. Someone who would be perfect for the comedic bits, but that I still haven't chosen for other reasons, is Paul Rudd. I think he could do this role very well, but I don't see him being as worn down as Sam is. I don't see him spending years after years in prison the way that I do Matthew McConaughey, who I've actually chosen. I think... Matthew McConaughey can do the humor, he can do the action, he can do the, the brother type uh, relationship with, with Tom Hardy. I think he's just incredible and I think he would work so well as Sam. And for the villain, again with Ramses, I've gone a bit on the younger side, but someone, I think you need a really capable actor in this. You need someone world class who can take this, this sly and and in many ways morally gross character and turn him into something amazing. And I think Dev Patel would be perfect. Give him a bit of makeup, give him a, a, a bit of a, a makeover, not totally of course, but like with the hair and the looks, I think he would be perfect. He's got the, uh, the, the, like the main characteristics down already, but I think he could really, with the right makeup, he could be perfect. And then, of course, another character that is very important and central to the story is Nadine Ross. Now, again, it was very, very difficult to find someone who lives up to this. Now, I've gone a bit young uh, for this one because 
I want someone who is, of course, younger than Chloe and Nate. Maybe not this young, but I think I think it, it could work. It, it could work well. I want someone with uh, with not not like uh, like really uh, really uh, uh, dark brown skin, but I want someone on the darker side, and um, and I want someone who can really be physical, and uh, and and who's who. Where you can believe as an audience that she could beat up Nate and Sam. And um, again, she's on the younger side, but I think Alicia Bow could really do a great job in this role. I think she could really come in there and and uh, and be a force of nature in a way. I think she could work very, very well. Okay, moving on to the montage in the beginning of the movie. The one thing I'm not going to take into account is whether or not a big actor would do a small role like it would be in this opening. Because, of course, some great epic actor like Daniel Day-Lewis wouldn't play a tiny actor in the opening 20-30 to 30 minutes of an Uncharted movie. I'm not going to take that into account. I haven't chosen Daniel Day-Lewis. That was just an example. But, of course, they wouldn't take that role. I'm not going to take that into consideration. I'm going to pick the actor I think fits the roles best. Now, the first one is Gabriel Roman. This was the easiest one to cast because there is an actor who looks exactly like Gabriel Roman, and it is Neil McDonough. Now, he can play the villain. He's done that in Arrow. I know that that his villain in Arrow isn't the most beloved, but I think he does a great job playing the villain, even though he isn't the best character, but I think Neil McDonough is a great actor. He can play the crazy, and when he does the turn, he can do completely menacing and crazy. Of course, that's just a few seconds before he's shot, but still, he is perfect. When it comes to Atok Navarro, I think it's a bit more difficult, and the one I've chosen doesn't look exactly like him, but he's got the, the ethnicity and... Uh, and I think he, I think with the right makeup, again, just like Dev Patel, he would really work. It's Gael Garcia Bernal. Sorry to Spanish speakers, I know that's probably not right. But he's a brilliant actor. I've seen him in, in Motorcycle Diaries, where he is amazing. And, and of course, he was in Old, that I know many people didn't like, but I don't really know why. I thought it was great. And I think he's really good in that as well. For Eddie Raja, I'm looking for someone on the smaller side but who is muscular and looks military and who can be that crazy, manic, energetic type that Eddie Raja is. And look no further than Riz Ahmed in Encounter. He can do that twisted, like, uh, that the twisted character. And of course, he would lean even more heavily into that. And I just think he would be perfect as Eddie Raja. For Harry Flynn... I have chosen someone who is a bit older than Tom Hardy, but of, but of course Tom Hardy is maybe a bit young to play Nate in this story. But I think it would work fine still. It is Jude Law. First of all, he is killing it as Dumbledore right now in Fantastic Beasts, and he's just a brilliant actor. I think in the movie, the talented Mr. Ripley, he looks like Harry Flynn. And uh, I know that's many years ago now, but I think g given the fact that he has looked like this, it is very easy to make him look sort of like that again. Now, regarding Charlie Cutter, the first one I'd actually gone for was Mark Strong, who I do think would be perfect. But then I saw an interview with Tom Holland uh, where Ali Plum uh, suggests Jason Statham, and I'm sure that he is probably the fan favorite but when i heard that i was just like of course of course no one in the world looks more like charlie cutter than jason statham and i know it's the boring pick but it just has to be jason statham jason statham is charlie cutter and it's pretty much the same story with Catherine marlowe i had thought of helen mirren before i heard it on the uh, on the in that interview but ali plum just uh, he just well Agreed with me, if you can say that. Helen Mirren, again, just she just is Catherine Marlowe. It, it is... Yeah, I don't really... Do I have to defend it? I No, I, of course I don't have to defend it. She is Catherine Marlowe. 
Now there are three more characters to cast, and the next one is Talbot. Now, once again, I went through a lot of actors until I found one where I was like, yep, perfect. And um, I looked at, uh, at James McAvoy as an option, and I th j just to say that all of these suggestions are good in my mind. There's just one who is perfect. And uh, I think James McAvoy would be really good. I just, there's just something that, that's lacking. I can't really put my finger on what. Just as well as I think Kit Harrington would be really good as well. But again, not as good as Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield is my favorite or second favorite actor right now. It is, it is him or Leonardo DiCaprio. He is just absolutely incredible. And I know he's probably not going to win the Oscar. I don't think he should, but I am rooting for him. I think Denzel Washington should win, but I, I'm, I'm rooting for him because it is Andrew Garfield. I just love Andrew Garfield. And I think he actually looks surprisingly like Talbot. I think he would do such a great job. He's, of course, English, so he can do the, the accent. And uh, yeah, it is just a... Uh, yeah, I just see him as Talbot. With Rafe Adler, I'd actually decided on James Franco. But then I saw someone when looking through a list of actors where I was just like, that's actually pretty brilliant. I'm of course looking for someone who is trained, but not like a bodybuilder. I'm looking for someone who uh, who is American. That is, I think that's very important for Rafe, that he has to be American. And I'm looking for someone who can turn more and more crazy as the story progresses. And I think one of the most underrated actors right now is Dylan O'Brien. I think he would be absolutely incredible as Ray Fadler. And I think he could really do the crazy. I think he could do the businessman side of him if, if that was to, to enter the movie. I just think he just fits the, the character so well. And the last character to cast for this montage is Zoran Lazarevich. Now, I am looking for someone who is huge in body. I am looking for someone who feels maniacal. I am looking for someone who has that voice. And there's just no one that fits as perfectly as Dominic Purcell. He's got the voice. He showcased that in, in Prison Break. He showcased it in, in the, the Arrowverse. He, he can play the crazy. He has the voice, he's got the build, and he is just incredible. Now, there is one more who I haven't written him into this version of the story, but if there was some sort of flashback to Nate as a child, I think Noah Schnapp would be perfect as Nate. Um, of course, you know you might know him as Will Byers in Stranger Things, and he just showcased from the first episode of Stranger Things that he is so great. He is a, a brilliant up-and-coming actor. And I think he can actually look pretty good as Nathan Drake, as a, as a young version of Nathan Drake. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. If you agree with me, tell me down below. And if you like what you saw, please consider clicking that subscribe button. What I want to do on this channel is just watch movies and, and review the movies, watch series, review the series, bring the reviews to you guys. And in cases like this, where I've just got some sort of crazy idea, I want to do that as well. So if you want to see that, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking that subscribe button.